Here we have Kwame, named after African leader. And here we have Kuma. Kwame and Kuma, that's right. Come here and hiding back there we have Mandela Garai Semaj, who is named after the freedom fighter because he was born on the same day, July 18th. Here we have, right here, this is Naita Akua Semaj. And back here we have the eldest of the lot, Nigeri Naima, uh, Nigeri Naima Semaj, born during prosperous times, belonging to warriors. That's the meaning of her name. So that's the entire Samaj clan. Yes, we know that. You forgot to say it. I, but Naita Akua, I mean, you're b born on a Wednesday, that's Akua, right? Yeah. And Naita? I don't know. Ah, uh, Liberator. Yeah. Okay, so these are all the Samajs. Yeah, the way we wear over here, it wasn't directly because someone in Africa did it that way. So we, it's a natural process by which we were subjected to a socialization experience that if your hair could not be combed with a comb intended for Europeans, you were considered nasty. So it meant you had to cut your hair as short as possible. Now, we decided to stop cutting and stop combing our hair because that's a direct retaliation against the forces which try to shape us into something else. We have not yet created a Jamaican identity. Every ethnic group in Jamaica tries to name Jamaica after them. The Chinese have been here for three generations, but we still call them Chinese. The Jews have been here for five generations. We still call them Jews. Uh, Englishmen. Englishmen have been here as, for longer than we have because they brought us here as slaves, and they still consider themselves Englishmen. Now, no black person anywhere in the world is respected because there is no naval power, air force, economic entity that will say, look, if you touch my people, we're coming to get you. That's the only people we know. America won't speak for us. Europe won't speak for us. So only a United States of Africa will bring respect to black people everywhere around the globe. And thus, black people in the Caribbean. Then we can be proud to be Caribbean because it now has a meaning. It isn't their foreign policy that make Rastas significant. They matter because they help people to rediscover their roots. It helped them to accept that they came from Africa and that a few generations back they'd been slaves. What had once been politely left unsaid could now be explored and celebrated. That rediscovery of our roots, and I say ours because they're mine too, was profoundly important. Africa became a new source of creativity and identity. For some people, rediscovering Africa meant trying to recreate a world that they'd never known. But for most people, it meant discovering a spark inside themselves. One man who's helped to build this cultural bridge between people's roots in Africa and their presence in the Caribbean is Rex Nettleford. He was brought up in Kingston, educated at Oxford, and is now a professor of extramural studies at the University of the West Indies. He's also a dancer, and the National Dance Company, which he leads, epitomizes this rediscovery of Africa. We are constantly communicating, saying something with the body. Jamaica strongly creolized, but creolized with the African experience. For me, um, a number of artistic expressions just wouldn't have any sense of place or purpose in the Caribbean or any meaning had not one taken into consideration the strength of this African presence. <laughs> And one, two, three, four, Where five, Europeans six, try to defy gravity, Rex Nettleford teaches his dancers always to feel connected with the ground. I can't count it, I just know what to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> One 
can speak genuinely about an Afro-Caribbean technique, but we also use um, discoveries that have been made in Western dance. But if we are at the bar, which is usually associated with European classical ballet, we don't move to the piano or the violin, we move to the drum. There is something in the drum. <laughs> There are some very important features of African dance, the emphasis on weight. The designs that we carve in space are sculpted, three-dimensional, rather than linear and attenuated, by and large, because of the sort of people that we are. Essentially, their impulse is Africa and it's there in our bones, rhythm. Rhythm becomes the melody. It's not the undertow. It takes the top line, as it were. And that's African. It's this transformation of the ground base of African rhythm and form which characterizes the work of Jamaican artists like Michael Gonzalez. I am mixed with African and European, and there's some Jew also in me. Um, and because of this, there, there are times I go through a kind of pulling, kind of tug and war kind of experience. My first uh, introduction to sculpture was very strongly African. My teacher was a white man from Canada, and he really used to reveal a lot about the mysticism of African sculpture. People would call me Rasta, or say, you know, he has Rasta leanings or something like that. Um, I, I'm not a Rasta. I tell it clearly to people, I'm not a Rastafarian. But I identify with them. I admire them greatly. I feel that uh, um, they're the only group after Marcus Garvey that have identified fully with Africa. Rex Nettleford has a fine collection of sculptures, including some from Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Guinea. If it's difficult to tell which were made in Africa and which in Jamaica, he says, that's part of the Rasta influence. There is a Rasta sensibility, and they've had tremendous influence on people's view of themselves, self-perception, on people's view of their own place in a society like this, and have helped considerably to bolster the self-confidence of black people. I mean, the mythic, the mythic dimensions which they bring to the reconnection is part and parcel of the, the reality. And in fact, the Rastafarians are, in that sense, true-blooded Jamaicans. I mean, they could only have come to where they have come because of the um, persistence of retentions and continuities out of black Africa. And in fact, they reflect very much um, the values and worldviews, perceptions of life shared by the people at the base of the society, the people from below. But having roots in Africa isn't the same thing as being African. There was a time back in the 1960s when it was fashionable for black Jamaicans middle class and affluent, not just the poor, to dress in African clothes, wear African hairdos, and make pilgrimages to Africa to find out where they came from. It didn't last. Those who went back often felt out of place, if not unwelcome. Because, of course, there was no way back. There are Caribbean people now, modern, confident, and belonging hair. But what Rastafarianism and black consciousness did was to take them through a barrier in their own minds. Moving back and forth between Jamaica and Haiti is like traveling in time. Compared with all this, the Africa of Haiti seems undiluted, 
almost to the point of being out of place in the new world. But the difference is really only one of degree. Both in Jamaica and in Haiti, it's the interaction of cultures, which, like the mixing of primary colors, produces something new with its own vibrancy and life. These ramshackle buses in the streets of Haiti's Port-au-Prince are called tap-taps. This is a country where everyone is an artist. Haiti's history, its early freedom, enforced isolation and lack of material progress, has enabled it, paradoxically, to produce the most original indigenous art of any island in the Caribbean. In the voodoo religious system, the separation of this world from the next, which is so familiar to us in Christianity, hardly exists. Haitian paintings unlock what voodoo unlocks, that innate sense of the way the supernatural and the everyday exist alongside each other. Au nom du Père, au nom du Fils, au nom du Saint-Esprit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The eternal words of the Catholic Church. Andre Pierre is a leading painter, and each day before he paints, he prays to God for inspiration. Mon Dieu, ne m'abandonne pas. Gloire au Père. Gloire au Fils, gloire au Saint-Esprit, qui régnait dans tous les siècles des siècles, ainsi soit. And having prayed to the God of the Christians, he prays to the gods of Africa. Andre Pierre is also a voodoo priest. This fusion of spiritual influences is behind everything he paints. This is a religion, he tells us, in which all the words of God can clearly be seen. That's why he paints, to show that voodoo is not a devilish religion. And he shows us how he paints, how he sings in front of his canvas, and paints the song of his inspiration. La paix m'aime tout n'a, pêche la terre de pieds de bras qui conduit choix à moi. Pas que tant moi tout marre, il drapeau moi déployé. Tant pour moi l'ando moi me dit en avant il ailleurs. L'univers entier lié avec religion. Les hommes en général de la terre lié avec religion. Maybe that's the secret of Haitian art. If everything is religion and religion is art, then everything is art. Whatever the reason, what has emerged from this isolated land is one of the most remarkable creations of the new world, the magical universe of Haitian painting. There's a clarity of vision, a directness about the way each artist sees the world around him that makes these paintings unique. It's impossible to tell what fusion of past and present, lost origins, dreams, memories and fantasies have provided the raw materials of these astonishing visions. Many Haitian paintings now fetch thousands of dollars in galleries around the world, but they start as the work of the poor and isolated.
As the poet Martin Carter said, I come from the nigger yard of yesterday, leaping from the oppressor's hate and the scorn of myself. From the nigger yard of yesterday, I come with my burden. To the world of tomorrow, I turn with my strength. In other countries, people are fed escapism. In Haiti, where life is harder, they paint their escape routes by making their own lives beautiful. in Haiti. Hair in the cacophony of Port-au-Prince is something which, for me, captures more vividly than anything else how the richness you find in Africa interweaves itself with Europe. This mixture is Caribbean and only Caribbean. In the Catholic churches which came here with the French, they light candles for the resurrection of Christ. Out in the streets, the Rara bands who go back to slavery mime their version with a juggler king. The sounds fuse together as midnight approaches. Outside, Judas is whipped by the Raras for his betrayal of Christ. Inside, they too recall Christ's suffering. Slave masters tried to ban drumming as pagan and lewd and politically threatening. But the Catholic Church has gradually come to realize that drumming has its own spirituality. Some churches have absorbed elements of voodoo into their own ritual. between the Raras and the Catholic Church is narrowing all the time. This church is a sort of hybrid between them. The truth is there are many shades of Africa in the Caribbean and none is pure. But in a profound sense, everyone, black and white, is touched by Africa. It's the soul of the Caribbean experience. Oh, no, 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 no,